them, and the most effective one, uh, it was not possible to find any antibody sequences in the human antibody library that okay. recognize this. That's uh, the peptide too. That okay. produces about seventy percent. This is against peptide forty-five, the one that you saw uh, the immune, uh, the antibody data on the previous one. Cancers, no virus, no virus. That in active immunization produced a, a reduction of fifty-six percent in adverse crosses. Uh, we're limited here in the experimental approach because it's a human IgG, so it's going to uh, induce an, an immune response in the mouse mm -hmm. against human IgG. Just IgG by itself? Yes, IgG itself is going to get an autoimmune response. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a window of about four to five weeks before these immune response will take over everything uh. and become atrogenic in itself. Because immune responses to foreign proteins are. Are we different. sure about this four or five weeks of window, or it might even start early and mess up your data? Well, you'll we'll see the you results. Can, you'll see the results. 25 okay. weeks. Classical like immunology said that if we use foreign antigen like we do here, it will take three weeks to get full immune response. Uh, so, this is the general setup that we have. And how old were these animals, by the way? Uh, you immunized at 20, 21, 22 <coughs> weeks of age. Mm -hmm. So oh. they, they got three injections of the antibody. And these are APOE? Mm -hmm. APOE and they have been on high fat diet from six weeks. We already developed a whole lot of placard by then. By 20 weeks, there's already uh, yeah, already extensive but not script. that much, not in the line that we have. They they start to develop the plaques about this age. Well, they started. They started age 16 series. Uh, you know, plaque you get over it all positive, and if you put them on cholesterol at the same time by age 22, you gotta have significant plaque. Yeah, you have not not line, but the mouse line that we have compared to most others, it's a little bit less aggressive. Okay. Uh, these are the recombinant tube IgG1 that we came up with. So we had uh, I think eight different antibodies. The control antibody, we have to have a control mm -hmm. that is a human IgG that mm -hmm. won't recognize anything. And this is one human antibody against FITS, mm -hmm. which you're sure not going to come. And most of them work. Well, this is the one that was most effective. It's uh, against uh, peptide sequence 45, and in the, mo in the highest concentration, 50% reduction. You have a 50% reduction by chance, probably. It was exactly what we saw with, with the active immunization with that antigen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, this is IgG passive immunization against an, an, an antigen that produced a 50% reduction during active immunization. Uh, during active immunization, and this happened within a period of. Four five weeks. weeks. Five weeks. While they were still on cholesterol? Mm -hmm. While they were still on cholesterol. Do you think it's a result of regression or is it the reduction? This is this is uh, inhibition or progression. It's yeah. still inhibition or progression. Yeah. We have some very recent result now that we actually can use regression mm -hmm. with the same extent. And this regression this inhibition of progression do you see it in a circulating LDL or oxidal LDL level, or we they have not changed? We can't measure that. The, the, the ELISA that's available to measure oxidized LDL only recognizes human oxidized uh, It doesn't react with it. So we're going into mechanistic studies by injection of labeled oxidized LDL and so on. But so far, if we look on the plaques that, that we have, we see also significant reduction in macrophage in the plaques. So they all both reduce size and less inflammation. So I, I think you think this IgG is doing more on immune cells or more on particles? I don't know. If you look here, this is staining from oxidized LDL in the in the plant. Yeah. And we can see that there is less immunoreactivity. Less immunoreactivity. So it appeared to have cleared. Yeah. It's sad that you can't measure oxidized circulating mm -hmm. oxidized. My guess is you're just 
diminishing the load of oxidized LDL in circulation. That could be yeah. maybe facilitating clearance. Yeah, yeah but either by yeah. loss production or. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See. So we get oxidized LDL in the plaques. And this is looking on the effect of uptake in macrophages. I remember interestingly that the antibodies, the IgM against oxidized phospholipids that the, the San Diego group has, blocks uptake in macrophages. Completely. Completely. By blocking uptake by scavenger receptors. This does exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. Enhances uptake. Enhanced uptake. Well, it, it in enhances uptake of oxidized LDL by macrophages because the IgG attached to it and now they are ready to be a scavenger. Could be. No, not scavenger. Goes to the FC receptor. FC receptor, receptor yeah. Yeah. So it changes from the scavenger receptor pathway, pathway to the FC receptor. receptor pathway. <laughs> and even if this is done now in macrophages, it's quite likely that the most important effect in vivo is in the FC receptors in the liver. Liver cells, that's what I was saying. You're just increasing their. <coughs> okay. And that may be the mechanism for yeah. clearance. Enhanced clearance. Enhanced clearance. And on the other hand, IgM, that Ritson and his group, does not enhance clearance of oxidized LDL. <coughs> well, if, if, if it does, it has to be through macrophages. It doesn't. Not through it doesn't. They, did the, they recently published data. <laughs> you're saying that perhaps the mechanism might be the panic clearance of oxidized LDL, draining the RV wall of oxidized LDL, or or turning circulating. Yeah, turning circulating. Circulating, or it may well, even be affecting the artery. But even even if it is through the FC receptor, we don't know. That may be a way that if oxidized LDL gets into the macrophage through the FC receptor, it may be more easily cleared yeah. than if it gets through the scavenger So That's the point yeah. you were making. Well, at least we know for at sure. least if it goes through FC receptor is not going to trigger a subsequent inflammatory pathway, whereas if it goes through scavengers just to starting a new pathway during degradation, you might pick up a new antigen. Yeah. But it's still, it, it's, it, if you go back and, and show the picture, but it's, it's still strange and difficult to understand that you have less foam cell formation. Yeah. Because yeah. you, in fact, you promote, you should promote foam cell yeah. formation. And there is less foam cells. That's so there are foam cells. You look at the macrophages. Not all of them are foam cells. Yeah, they look like. They look like. like. <laughs> You're saying that those macrophages will then be able to. Leave. Maybe the exit is faster. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, maybe maybe the exit is so you have at any one time point you have fewer because you have increased the transit. And there is actually an alternative. But these are all yeah, but don't you think the, 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 the most likely speculation is you really lower the burden of this? Could be. But then that explains why you don't have as many macrophages or food cells because you don't have as many substrates right. now circulating right. because you clean them up. And that, but now let's say from the development point of view, would that be an appropriate policy to go after to passive immunization? Pa for passive immunization to re to reduce oxidizer a little bit? Because we're not going to say that may be uh, something that can be acutely used yeah. like to change, yeah. just like Evan Milano just, just like Just like a, just <laughs> like a, a, just like a two weeks plasma yeah. fluorosis. Right. So yeah. you put them after acute coronary signal, for example, or whatever you find, put them on this one for a period of six weeks and just shut down significantly, just like you put them on health system. Exactly. I mean, as induction therapy, yeah. to get the process started quickly and then maintain it with that. But put them on the spatting after that. <laughs> this is interesting. There is also a complicated things, an alternative mechanism. A lot of speculation. That's yeah, but we have to. That's how we have to answer. Yeah. Okay. That have F3 receptors. So it could be actually what the passive immunization do is to work as an adjuvant for active immunization. Mm -hmm. But you don't know. If you think of passive immunization as a sort of a uh, induction or a, a, a lead-off therapy, and then you have active immunization for a follow-up, um, is that the way you're thinking about or it? Or maybe in different settings. Yeah, that's yeah, for, but, but, but for children. Is it, you know, what, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to do IgG. Thing. You want to do... What, what, are you thinking also that perhaps immunization might, active immunization might be something that you give to children? Right, yeah. that's our dream. That's, a, <laughs> that's, that's the ultimate dream. 
That is the ultimate dream. Yeah. If you prove on a large group, you know, probably 50,000 sample, that you really don't have that kind of graded modification that I was worried about. And it's more of a binary. And if they develop the IgG active by immunization for that, then you can be safely administering it to kids and do the active immunization and also use the passive one for later age where we, where we find this disease and we probably with your other test of balance, TH1, T2, finding these people are more vulnerable, put them on a rapid induction, just like a, a plasma fluorosis. You know, if this is true, it's just like a plasma fluorosis. They would be very aggressive and then put them on staff. This is as fascinating. As long as we just talk about sort of these, these grand pictures. Uh, <laughs> grand pictures. No, but I have, to, I have to leave in just a minute. You have to have lunch have before you leave. Yeah, well, I, have to leave. I think we need to kind of move. Yeah, uh, is there I've got to leave. Is there a carcinogenesis problem in vaccination programs? Carcinogenesis? I mean, now, now we're talking about a immunization against a disease which is a very, very long-term disease, and uh, the competing disease is, uh, is cancer. Yeah. And is there a, uh, has there ever been a problem? None of the vaccines that have been in humans have ever had that question about malignancy that I'm aware we, we get vaccine for, we keep vaccine for kids for a long time, you know. Well, the direct answer to your question is we don't know. Or, or the, there's no precedent for it. No, I think the, the, the major adverse events that we Kidney. Yeah. Yeah. We're going in and we're trying to modulate about a delicate balance. Yeah, that's we, the major concern. We block on a very narrow margin that we can quickly switch to autoimmune disease and trigger other things that we don't want to have. Otherwise, based on vaccine experience in children, you would not be worried too much about uh, cancer or other weird type of things. But if we are able to guarantee this margin of tolerance in self and non-self with this. Mm -hmm. And that requires an extensive study. I want to switch to the next <coughs> section of our yeah, talk. I don't have any more really to do most of the summaries. So. May I ask a question? What happens okay. if you give oxidized LDL on the oh. mucose membrane? We're, in, we're into that. Well, that's yeah. one of the things, yeah. mucosal yeah. immunity, that's one. Yeah. Essentially, that would be the way to go. Because uh, if you immunize through mucosal, either intranasal or oral, yeah. that usually go by, uh, by inducing TH2 responses. And tolerance. Uh, or tolerance. And tolerance. Yes. We don't really know what tolerance is. Are you starting in the No, I, think I, would, if I, were you, I would use the other learning lesson that are coming in cancer and other disease for mucosal and others. Because yeah. you just, if you find the right antigen, then that's the easy part. Yeah, but again, the, the, the question is do we want tolerance? Stocks, uh, guys, that would be all. Maybe we don't want tolerance. Yeah. So there's a number of issues. But Maybe we want an immunization. We want active immunization in early age. So yeah. in kids, you probably won't have that. And there may be other antigens to which tolerance might be helpful. Heat shock protein. Yeah. I'm okay. Beta glycoprotein. Why do other that's people have not uh, vaccinated or immunized with oxidized LDL as you are doing? Mm -hmm. Why have no, no one tried glucose uh, application of oxidized LDL? It, uh, I think one group in uh, Israel has tried. They haven't had much success. They have tried oral administration. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it, there's much that's happened with that. No. Oral for oxidized LDL? Yeah, yeah. oral. Yeah. As a mucosal, because mucosally introduced antigens tend to provoke more tolerance. We're looking in our intranasal administration. We're looking at that. Agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I just saw a little paper. The intake of oxidized LDL with foods, mm -hmm. which we never thought, mm -hmm. is uh, correlated with your circulating oxidized LDL. The, and this is this whole idea is we, we've never looked at how much we our ordinary food we take mox, mo, uh, modified uh, uh, for parts of uh, lipids that that are not necessarily endogenous or exogenous. Thank you. Should we go with your slide? Yes, I. I don't think we, never, we didn't finish. We didn't touch no. the heart shock protein and, no. and uh, glycoprotein, but those two are uh, one is Israel, the other one is George Wick and, and Wu right. are working on it. CTPs in the company, I want, I want to, what was that? I want pharmaceutical. I want immune. Yeah. 
Well, that's a totally different idea. That is raise HDL. That is just helping with lipid pathway. To raise HDL. To raise HDL. Not has nothing to do with clearance or plaque formation. It's just and it hasn't been very effective in raising HDL in the phase one human study. Okay. And you said cytokines. What is? Yes, I think. How do you try that? We what? Vaccine against cytokines. And to try yes, the, we, vaccine is against alpha. Tumor yeah. alpha? Yeah, and use Freud adjuvant. And we saw an equal reduction whether you had TNF alpha or not. You could We induced a massive immune response against TNF alpha and with antibodies in the blood, but it was not protective. <coughs> but you wouldn't want to have uh, your kid be vaccinated against TNF alpha, would you? <laughs> it's one of the mediators. Well, I mean, it, it is one, one of the targets. So. Well, TNF alpha is such a widely used tool in our body is a new system and you knock them out. But I, I think testing the hypothesis was quite appropriate. Okay. I mean, CD4 is another one. CD4. Hematitis, I think. So we were talking about hepatitis. Yeah. Anti-TNF antibodies have this uh, treatment, effective treatment. Yeah, for, for, for the disease, not for immunization from the, you know, early age where you need that TNF alpha to do all sort of function. Correct. Okay. And there is a risk with that. Antagonizing as they have a higher risk of developing TB and others as well. Okay. So any other antibody has come to to the to the game? Antibody against apoptotic bodies? Well, there's actually an interesting uh, <coughs> work going on in Japan where they're taking whole macrophages and immunizing against macrophages. <coughs> and actually, you read the paper. Immunizing against macrophages? Yeah. It was a poorly done study. It's just the same thing as in cancer, like you're, yeah. you're taking dendritic cells and immunizing here. Yeah. The idea is you create antigens that are in the macrophage, macrophage antigens. Okay. You provoke an anti-macrophage response. To kill yourself, you will be saving? No, just whole macrophages. Yeah. So there must be an epitope. Yeah, they, they didn't recognize that. Just send them, send them to gamma radiation and send them to gamma radiation. It was a gamma attraction. It's a totally done study. It's so weird. It was a little weird. Huh? Yeah. They said, why? Yeah. 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 So you have to actually show a reduction in that. But, 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 but when you look at plaque, there are potential particles that are in plaque and not other places. Would that not be a potential targets for antigen studies? You know, if you put the plaque through HPLC, you'll find quite a few, par, you know, compounds. I mean, obviously we are touching the surface of this field, and you know, you can only do so much. <laughs> no, you, you, you to stay mean, focused on. No, I understand. That that that. Could be testable in humans is really our goal. So I want to go to the reason that with this um, meeting was such a great education. Thank you so much for really making that dumb uh, presentation for me. At least I learned a lot. Now, well, our job in our group is to to write this up for a layperson to understand how deep is this research. It's not an one thing. And um, we went after the cystic fibrosis. You know, cystic fibrosis compared to atherosclerosis is a much more clearly understood disease and process. And you just have you, well, you know the cause because you know the cause. Yeah. You have pathways that are very well established. Their cause, their mission is, you know, to challenge this disease by identification, by improving. Uh, uh, treatment and access to treatments and so on, but, and create awareness and so on. Interesting thing was um, their um, campaign has a very nice niche that we're, we would like to adapt from them. Is, uh, they put on the uh, website and the uh, brochures, uh, buy an hour research for cystic fibrosis. And their um, an hour research was uh, $200, if I'm not mistaken. But the numbers are, and as part of the, the, the group that Dan is not here, but he brought up is, we want to go out and put this campaign to come here and buy one minute research for vaccine for your kid for not having heart attack. And the question was, how much is going to be? And uh, if you have a campaign, then people will just go pay, uh, uh, this amount to buy one minute, and we ended up 
coming to a by a second <laughs> research, <laughs> a research a by a second research for vaccine a dollar. Oh. And, uh, and the total was, by 2020, we poured money into this field. The total was $2.2 billion of total investment, which would go into imaging tools that monitor the, the, the outcome of this study, all the way to screening these antigens, to do the early preclinical studies, to create platform with, for translational research from the preclinical studies. I just want to create some thought brainstorm because I have to take back and we, once we have the transcript, I'm going to read it. We at what it would take to bring this to the next series of experiments and up to human phase one and then eventually phase two, assuming everything goes right. Roughly 40 million to bring it to about phase two. 20 million, uh, it's cheap. 10 to 15 million to first phase and then another 20 to 30 to phase two. Phase three could be uh, 100 million. Now, uh, imagine what you're saying is just for your particular yeah, just, yeah. just this yeah. Yeah. Now, step up like five times more, yeah. ten, ten times, times more, two. and just see so you have yeah. these laboratories all over, and you have five antigens now, now and you're probably going to find five more in the next uh, five years, look into them, and aggregated this. I want to get just your feedback to this, that if we, if we put a campaign, and this is not going to be this year, it is, we're just going to do a reading and our preparation and uh, uh, just homework, but this concept of buy a, a, a second of vaccine research for a dollar and uh, contribute to this campaign is, is going to have to have some background, some supporting documents that Yes, this $2 billion by 2020 is a reasonable money. It's not, it might be even less than what we uh, actually need in order to deliver reasonable working uh, uh, vaccine. Now, what do we mean by Mission 2020 for vaccine initiative? It's not we're going to eradicate heart attack by, two mission, by 2020. We want to say by 2020, we guarantee you we will have working vaccine, one or more, for whatever level, either kids or adults, develop. Means, say we start today and we have the money 2006, probably takes three years to five years, do all the preclinical studies and all this development given the sufficient funding. And say that would take uh, somewhere, uh, you said, Hundred million dollars for your approach. For, which, for, 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 for phase two, so up answer. to phase two could be up to forty to fifty million dollars total. Up to, to phase, phase two. Two means basically you have a two solid, concept, yeah, a solid evidence to move to a clinical to a good, clinical, to good clinical study phase three. Right. You have, by phase two, you have done right. right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. You're, you're confident that you can go for the phase three, okay. which is a significant uh, uh, investment. But what I'm saying is, we, we just want to break it down and have a little, uh, I mean, we're still in 50,000 feet, but a little clear idea. How many laboratories do you know that are doing this with the purpose and mission of vaccination or immune modulation? We have identified about uh, 56 some NIH grants on immune and atherosclerosis. This was last year, 2003. And I'm not talking about grant, I mean, patents and the things that we found in the industry. This is just the academia. How many laboratories? Let's just, from what I know, and maybe Jan can mention, it's our labs, UC San Diego, George Wick's group, and the group in Israel. I'm not aware of anybody else looking at a vaccination idea or immune tolerance. Idea. Well, Hanson, he's, he's in our group. Okay. Well, Hanson, yeah, ha Hanson uh, and uh, the group in France are also my lots. Um, but they're not looking at vaccine. They're looking at immune modulation is not just vaccination. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying immune modulation and vaccination right. because they might come with IgG. So that will expand it to yeah. a lot larger. Well, I know. They might come with IgG. Passive immunization, mm -hmm. IgG therapy, which we eventually we cannot leave them out. We, we, if we want to have a big umbrella of new paradigm of therapy, vaccination is our most preferred. But you may come up with a, a 
by 2020, there are a lot of vulnerable patients out there. And if passive uh, IgM therapy would prove a very efficient way, we have to be, you know, inclusive on it. In that line, how many other laboratories? Peter Libby's lab is not working on this. I don't and think there is directly. I know there is a neurology done. group. That's with the neurologists yeah. in multiple sclerosis. They done one total study right. with, with the neurology yeah. group. Yeah. Because the neurology group is interested in MS. And because of that, he hooked up with them and did a tolerance study. A tolerance system. Mm -hmm. that, that was the heat shock protein, HSP. And then uh, you and uh, Hansen sent me a list of folks in Italy that were also working on this. And uh, I'm just trying to bring up the list as we're talking. Can I borrow your uh, connector? Your connector, please. This proposal was prepared uh, for publishing the Scientific American. Uh, well, I'm leaving. Uh, thanks very much. Sure. Thank you for. Yeah. You, you're not going to have lunch here? No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll I'm sorry. Okay. Well, have a safe trip. Yeah. It was okay. a great I'm sorry, thing I'm with you. I'm not going to hear you. Okay. We'll send you. We'll send you an email. Bye. Bye. Have a good trip. Um, there was a list of. I'm going to bring that list of uh, well, three K's out uh, of about two people. This was the list of grants I was going to just briefly show you. Uh, this group is not UC San Diego. It is UC San Diego. It's not with Joseph. Vaccine approach to modulation of atherosclerosis. Are you familiar with it? I've seen. I've seen the application. It's uh, essentially looked like the work we've been doing, uh, but they, they seem to be five or six years. Like that. Yeah. Just doing the same thing that yeah, you're doing. I was a little bit surprised over it. Okay. So she's a she's a relatively junior, yeah. but she got an NIH grant. And I was really surprised. And then when I went to her background, she's a hematologist. Uh, uh, so I was curious if she has anything new and how did she get an IH grant uh, I, I don't think a PK has an IH grant on a vaccination uh, mm, I, don't, no, I don't think on vaccination I think it has it on gene therapy so this might be interesting to she's from UCSD but there, in this grant I don't see Joe uh, Ritzton's uh, name and uh, PK we're talking about other laboratories, and this one, the first one that came to my attention, this lady, Pierre uh, Tier. Well, what is she doing? Is she uh, she's a rheumatologist by training, and uh, she's got an IH grant. Uh -huh. and I must say, I haven't seen this. Yeah, it's, and I was surprised. I said, well, if they want to give an ice cream, they have to, I mean, I don't expect an ice doing the right things, but they should have given it to you. 
and uh, somebody with almost no background. I went to her background. We have actually never applied to NIH because that would waste yeah. another yeah. year. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have this much data. We'd be spending time on writing grants. We went to the Eisner Foundation uh, here and that helped. Yeah. Uh, so I, this is one of the things we, we of course, as as association for education, like that to support a risky they research. No. Mm -hmm. And I hate risky research. They never want to go out on a limb. So this would have been considered high risk, and they would never have funded it. The, I wonder why. How did she get there? It's very simple. This is work done by both our group and the other San Diego group ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We hypothesize that immunization of those mice with human MDA LDL in the presence of CFA should reduce atherosclerosis. Yeah, that was done by uh, Whitson in 1995, 96, same time. So I don't know. This is a little. So this was uh, one of them. <coughs> and then uh, these are NIH grants that are supporting uh, active or passive immunization. Then you have the FC receptor. Yeah, the IgG FC receptor and it's of LD immune complex. Uh, are you familiar with this group? No. Morganelli, Peter Morganelli. So this, to me, is a passive immunization type of approach. The other one was active immunization. So, of course, the herpes virus and rhesus we knew that, and this one is a new one again. Um, Andrew Lickman, that's from Brigham. From Brigham? Yeah, he's an immunologist. I think, yeah. They're using the role of course and labor pathway in line. I have from gamma production T cell response to plaque now they that's and I'm moving this as part of our plan to uh, call for yeah, it is from mm -hmm. <coughs> inviting uh, others. The invading cells, as you know, uh, picked up quite a few uh, migration. There you go. <laughs> That's the paper. This the paper just came down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Fisher Square. Yeah. Erling, I sent you this paper. I think you. This was just published in PDF. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, I'm going to go back and home and find it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll round off. Yeah. 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 This okay. is an area where there's going to be a lot of progress in the next two or three years. Trafficking. Yeah, yeah. The This is a very yeah. interesting thing. Well, we're, we're about, four, about five, ten, seven years behind cancer because mm -hmm. this is exactly what happened in cancer. It's just a yeah. burst of the energetic cells research and grants. Mm -hmm. uh, This is uh, George Wisdom's old grant. There's nothing really uh, in and it. And the infectious disease is a path where we all know it's how uh, it went through. And I think they were major ones that I've Came up with. And if you, if these are all in age grants? Yes, these are all in age grants. In this field? In, in immune related NIH grants. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, very few of them were purely related to vaccine. But the bottom line is we would like to have, uh, besides our core team, an advisory board. And I noticed you just admitted that we need to invite, if we have the funding, some pure immunologists whose job is just basic immunology and they just sit here and answer questions or be a 
calling consultant type of uh, uh, no, not just in and out, but also people who may have and vaccine, vaccine, vaccine development. <laughs> yes, that, that, that means from a regulatory point of view and scientific point of view. Scientific. We need a, a bundle of these for our advisory group in addition to the, the core team that we have. And the plan is at some point, and I'm going to work with you to find that point, to call for a meeting particularly focusing on this in inviting so it will be a few months of back and forth inviting them those who agree they want more explanation what is this and we tell them this is a so say uh, six to nine months from now we're shooting for our first formal meeting of advisors and people who are involved and hopefully by then I will have at least one or two uh, like Eisen uh, Eisner Grant. Eisner Grant's Good idea. idea. Who wants to join? <laughs> because they will bring the credit with them when, when we have. The I would credit. actually suggest that we keep our target as the Bill Gates Foundation, as a major target for fundraising or grants, because that's the kind of project they are the taking. Gates Foundation is very interested. They are taking true. Malaria, this and vaccine, you know, preventive approaches that are globally applicable. Yeah. So I think that should um, be a big target. Again, well, I'm sorry that we don't have Dan Keeney here. He is going to be in charge for making this link, and he has his own PR approach. That yeah. we we have to raise to a level to to connect to uh, Bill Gates Foundation, and I'm going to leave that part with him, but. You're absolutely right. They're, they're very interested in develop, developing countries and whatever therapies that can be developed here and easily transferred to them. So vaccination is definitely a moment. Now, with this, so this is our outline for advisory group. The list that Johan, uh, Johan Hansen sent is a list of nine uh, investigators, which were two of them were from Italy and France. Uh, of course, our team and uh, Peter Libby was in, in, uh, listed. I'm not sure really we can get Peter Libby, and I'm not going to really, just like you, not spending time on and I'm not spending time on bragging him because it's going to be difficult to waste time. But at one point, we're open. If he wants to join, at one point, he'll be more than invited to, to the team. Uh, right after this, having this global picture of where we're going, you're still we're in 50,000, 40,000 feet. We want to come up with writing, putting together um, an executive summary of uh, just like the same discussion that we had. Just bring this pic beautiful picture uh, to a lay, not necessarily very lay, so scientific American is our target, with a lot of illustration and pathways that just like you design these pathways that you want to do. I proposed this to Mike, and he's been more than uh, supportive in getting to talk to Pfizer people. In, in whatever uh, name we can get funding, uh, we want to go after this. But uh, I should say that I have initial funding to start, and I wanted to invite you if you could please uh, take the lead of the, to, to building the structure of this report. It, it may not need to be a huge and Elling is going to, he promised to help, and I'm going to count on his promise. He always says, I don't know anything about this, no, this is something that I don't want. And then when he comes to, to talk, discussion, I, I, then you see he's ahead of everybody. <laughs> he opens up. I don't know how much I can help, <laughs> he, but if I can help. Thank you. So we, we, we will plan on a wide up on this, and I'm going to talk to you uh, after the meeting in more detail. So Scientific American, and I have an example here to show you, has uh, an HIV report. Of course, HIV is much more understood and uh, well developed, but this is Scientific American HIV report. Sort of summarizing 20 years of research um, on HIV. 
I'm not sure that we necessarily have to do 20 years of uh, research in more in deep research in detail. Right, and I thought that I had other pages, but uh, basically to bring a summary of just like you just said, we were so obsessed with macrophage, one element of immune system over years learned this, and this time we learned this, and then this time, an overview that would make the story compelling to uh, more than average, science, so familiar with scientific, you know, uh, American type of literature, but this is a doable project. The reason for that is we can back this up when we talk to Eisenhower or other type of uh, foundation and, and uh, charity, as well as uh, a general public. This is not a very general public, but it's still, a, it is a, it's a first step. Now, in that line, I was thinking of, say, three to five articles if needed, or maybe two articles, or three articles, but having more than one or two authors and inviting some other authors to contribute. Not And, and if, you, if you think that F, uh, Peter Libby can be also helpful, we would invite him. I'm not sure if he would participate, but I, I, I would like for us to be un, you know, inclusive so we wouldn't be tagged later on that they just brought a business with a big name and just started going. So we're inviting, but to have this structure, you know, one said obviously he would be very happy to participate, and uh, you are here. Who else do you think would be passionately? <coughs> it would be, you said Pol Polinsky? Well, Polinsky might be. From um, Yeah, I, I didn't want to t contact him before this meeting to have a better feeling of. I mean, because they have to assume a line that is somewhat distinct, yeah. and I think that would be a good complement to our yeah. line. To line. Somewhat separate. Yeah, well, they're, they're using those for their pressure for the yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. Anybody in Europe beyond Wick? Uh, yeah. George Wick. Yeah. And or is Rolf Zinkernagel? Ralph Zinkenaker. Yeah, he is a fantastic immunologist. What about the guy that has been working with the Chinese guy that has been working together with George Week, who is now in London? Yeah, he's in London. Dr. Joe. 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 Immunization field and gone complete to stem cells, you know? What? I don't know what he's, he's doing. He's mostly working with stem cells and beginning to cells now. Oh, he's working with stem cells, he's no longer in. But I think George Wickham, Zinkenagel might be. I will meet him in a few weeks. You're meeting him in a few weeks? He's coming to visit our lab and. Uh, oh. all Maybe you can give us an update of his yeah, interest. I no, I I I person, another person would be Dora Harat. Yes, yes he, his name, her name. Yeah. I he's, he, I'd he, say he, he's, he's from the Israel group. Yeah, he's from yeah. Japan. Yeah, I have his name in, in the list. Of, uh, out of these three groups who have grants here, what do you think about it, getting them involved or inviting them? I don't know much more about that, but we already have Whitstone's group. But she's not in Whitstone, she's in Sydney. No, 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 we already have out of this group, the Whitstone yeah. group. I has think he uh, published uh, anything in this area? I'm sorry? Has she published anything in this area? Well, if, is, if she hadn't, I don't think she should uh, be. But we have the group I look She's not Virella. Well known. Virella is Virella. He's been, she's been involved in the, uh, in the, Infection, yeah, right. Viruses, and also it talks about the immune right. Lopez Virella. Uh, Virella, how do you spell his name? V e v i r e l l e i. I'm sorry. V i. And then, I think it's Lopez. Yeah. I don't know for sure. I think, I think, the remarried couple. Yeah. Virella and Lopez Virella. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Lopez Virella. Yeah. Okay. Is she publishing in English or in medicine? Definitely, but I'll just get her name. Anyway. So
So this list will be a list. Oh, it should do, uh, I think, correspondence to. to okay. uh, I'll keep that one. But to, so to conclude our meeting is, um, I will work with um, Yen as a representative of this team to create the structure of the uh, of the executive summary. We we can assign portions to whoever. Right. You might you might just find I mean okay, cluster this as one article, but assign different sections yeah. to different people to write, <coughs> and uh, or maybe break it down in different papers. That's the important thing to decide before we start writing. This. Yeah. Okay. What if we should have separate uh, papers and what the focus of the See, my, my original proposal was one general paper describing paradigm shift from a non-immune picture to an immune metabolic disease picture of atherosclerosis. I mean, first of all, how many papers will they accept? No, they, well, first of all, we'll have to pay for it. We're going to pay for it for the publication. So the, the larger, the, the more expensive it's going to cost for us, for, for AHA. But the usual number of pages for a supplement is about like 15 pages. So yeah. the way to lay the structure might be the role of immune system in vascular disease as one, okay, and okay. in that subsection, innate and adaptive immune response, and then immune modulating therapies which can be vaccine and non-vaccine approaches. So at general, the reason I said paradigm shift is to, you also need to know this is a scientific American, that's got right. to be a very so flashy, yeah, flashy type of things, right. discovery, so it's a major revolutionary discovery. Well, it happened, it, it happened over 20 years. Peter Lee, Peter Lee, had a paper in Scientific American. Yeah, he, in he, had, he had two papers, yeah. actually two reports in Scientific American, but his, his job is different. He's not yeah, really, the same topic. Yeah. He's saying Peter Levy rather than mm -hmm. saying the new paradigm. We're saying the role of in, in, I mean, I, we all know that it doesn't, <laughs> it, 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 the system and the whole gen, generation of, of science here. The second one would be, the application of this new science in making a change concept of immune modulation. Okay, the concept of immune modulation and, uh, and that can then look at different approaches, yeah. vaccines, okay, and cytokines or whatever else there might be. I, I, I think you, with this input that we got from from everybody, you and I can put this yeah. together, and then I'm going to work with Mike to convey this to Pfizer, and uh, I'm sure we will be able to next three to six months finalize it and I, I think it's important to have an inclusive approach when we talk to others because you never know so one person can have uh, a link to a congress or somewhere some uh, influential figure not that to help us uh, to undermine this campaign because this campaign is going to be a popping campaign you don't want to bring it up and somebody say oh no this is our bogus and they far, far. we will have some people say that but not those people who do the active research so we want to be able to have those people who do the active research in the team I think that's all I want to say and, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry that we jump over your presentation if you want to switch to your uh, no problem if you, if you have five or ten minutes left. I this is your, your slide, right? Yeah. Do, you, do you want to tell us in five, ten minutes? Yes, first let me say I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for this discussion. Uh, uh, it, uh, there was a lot, really a lot of information that brought my horizon in terms of uh, background for us or the other. Um, well, we have had some, for some time, interest in you know, the LDL, well, just because it's, it's one of the major hypotheses in, in uh, in atherosclerosis, but uh, we couldn't find an appropriate essay. And then after the, all the antioxidant uh, uh, trials, yeah, and all, it, was, it really discouraged uh, me. And there was some in, renewed interest from our side when we set up a program on LP PLA2, because LP PLA2 uh, uh, um, generates pro uh, atherogenic mm -hmm. molecules from Oxidas LDL. And incidentally, last, week, last year at the uh, uh, ESC meeting in Vienna, I ran into Jan and asked him about an appropriate essay, and he mentioned the Melcordia essay. So uh, we get into contact with these people, and, and uh, after we have seen that the essay worked in our hands, we did a small uh, 
<coughs> actually a pilot study where we also looked for other uh, emerging markers. And these are, these are the data of that prospective study. It's a nested case control study um, um, with the participants of two Monica uh, surveys. Uh, it's middle-aged men, 45 to 74 years, and we identified 88 uh, patients with uh, coronary disease events, which is fatal and non-fatal myocardial infarction uh, and uh, sudden cardiac death. And we age-matched these men uh, to controls from the general population. So all the cases and the controls are drawn from the general uh, population, uh, really rep representative uh, population. So this is some, just in the first slide, some uh, demographic characteristics. There is no differences in the obvious age was the matching variable and education, uh, uh, which we use as a marker of social class. Then body mass index, you would expect some difference. A percentage of actual hypertensives, and uh, there is no difference in physical activity. Obviously, smoking uh, behavior was different between uh, cases and controls, and uh, no difference with regard to alcohol intake, which we always uh, measure. Uh, then looking at the, uh, at the number of lipid variables that were available uh, in that study, uh, you see the difference in, 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 uh, uh, in cholesterol. Uh, this is a population with uh, uh, slightly uh, abnormal uh, mm -hmm. total cholesterol differences in HDL uh, cholesterol. You see that they were not significant, maybe just because of the of the numbers. Then the ratio was clearly really different again. Then we also looked for the uh, non-HDL cholesterol, which also was significantly different, and uh, the LDL 171 over 157. Uh, and uh, at the bottom you see. Uh, the oxidized LDL concentration uh, in cases and controls, which are significantly uh, different. Mean follow-up, by the way, was approximately six years. Uh, the next one. Okay. Good work. Right here. Uh, <coughs> then first we looked into several mm -hmm. correlations between um, oxidized uh, LDL uh, and uh, a number of lipid uh, variables. Obviously, you would expect in cases and controls the correlation with a uh, number of these uh, um, variables, especially the uh, total cholesterol, the ratio, and the non-HDL, and also the LDL. But it may me a little bit. I would have uh, expected that. Uh, not much difference. Between, not much difference between cases and controls, right? In, 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 in terms of correlation, right? Total but usually, we use uh, in doing these correlation analysis. We we only uh, use the controls because mm -hmm. uh, it's it's. Uh, um, uh, you, you may run into some problems in, in cases uh, because of. But would you, would you expect a different correlation? Yeah, yeah you yeah, wouldn't have that uh, because of overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what surprised me a little bit, I would have suggested CRP. that the CRP right. would, would uh, be more closely correlated to, right. to OxLDL. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it, it, it's, it's not in cases mm -hmm. and, and controls. I mean, the largest, you have the large number, that's why it's borderline significant. But by, if you look at the, uh, uh, at the R value, it's, it's more or less uh, the same. Mm. And the, uh, okay, and there's some correlation with the... The age, um, I'm, I'm surprised, it's, it's not as uh, negative as you showed in, in your study. That was more pronounced. But remember, that's a specific antigenic epitope. Ah. This is oxidized LDL. Yeah, we looked on the okay. relation between H and antibodies. And one antibody. Yes. Yes. You, could, you could tell us a little bit more about the antibody. I only know it's a, the same one that was used by the Harvard, Harvard group in their studies. But this is, you're using an oxidized LDL assay. Yes, this okay. is oxidized This is also an assay. This is, in the lab. okay. Yeah. But what we, did, we we saw the same thing actually as with an increase in oxidized LDL with age. Mm -hmm. As you see it in control group, we saw that both in the control group and in the cases. Uh -huh. This one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On here? This one. Yeah. Huh. But the same so that, same. Because this, this is the only. Yeah, the, uh, like that. Yeah. The, these, uh, I don't care much about this one because this is 0.09, but this one and this one. Seems um, the only difference between control and case group. But that tells me s something that is the control. Yeah. Because yeah. his because his group were cases also. They had negative. Yeah. But the control I didn't see that. But if a control in his group in Young's group also shows that the relationship is positive, but in cases negative, that's yeah. something to explore. Different. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I mean, look at the P values. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's related to the size. Yeah, I don't know if there's. And also, that's, that's a very high. low R. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think we, we, we in the cases, we saw an increase with age. Mm -hmm. And that was. But there were increases. Yeah, there were cases. Uh, Did you look at any control? Yeah, same thing. Same yeah, thing? Yeah, so same thing. So our control. So your yeah. control was positive? Yes. Oh, that's interesting, though. I mean, if, you, if your control shows a positive relationship yeah. with age and your case shows negative relationship with age, well, this is something very important. No, no. remember, there's two different things measuring. This right. is they a measuring the response to a certain epitope. I know, but this, this is, is oxidized LDL, so you don't expect. We also found a positive uh, correlation with oxidized LDL and age. It was the antibodies to work out. Ah, okay. No, no, no. Okay. okay. So this, 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 okay. this, 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 So this is probably the core, the core slide. Has a great show. Wow. Yeah. Uh, can, can you move it a little bit? A little bit, a little bit yeah, more? I can do that. Oh, sorry. No, no, just this one. This one. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, no, no, it's actually no, off the computer. It's, a, it's not yes, in the uh, Cox, yeah. but Cox model. It started off with a basic model uh, that you see on, on the top, which did not include any of the lipid markers. And what it included uh, is shown down. Uh, um, down there, uh, like the H survey education and, and all the other variables, except for any of the, uh, of the lipid variables. And we came up with the area under the curve of 0.664. And we looked into the different uh, uh, lipid variables, and firstly uh, into uh, oxidized LDL. <coughs> What you see on the left side is the hazard ratio if you compare the top turtile uh, to the bottom turtile, mm -hmm. um, and the confidence intervals, and, and uh, to the right side uh, you see the uh, area and the curve, and you see that there is a clear difference between the basic model and the model that uh, uh, that mm -hmm. contains the the oxidized uh, the oxidized. Which one? You're, you're sure no, you're to the right, to the right, and the yeah, additional is an incremental increase. Uh, incremental increase. increase. And uh, additionally, uh, we looked, uh, we we did some. Wow statistics um, uh, that uh, gives you information about the fit of the model, and this is Akaike's information criteria. And by definition, if it's uh, above 10, then there is a significant improve in the fit of the model. And that's uh, if, you, if you add that, if, if you add that variable. So clearly, uh, come, uh, oxidized LDL comes out very strong. I mean, 3.76, uh, uh, I didn't expect that, uh, especially uh, if, you take in, and, and if you keep in mind that it's relatively uh, a small study. But this is adjusted, though. This is adjusted. This is adjusted for uh, the other variables. Uh, you, you do not for uh, not for the other lipid variables, but for the other variables you see you see down there. Adjusted for age survey because we use two surveys: education year, smoking status, alcohol consumption, physical activity, uh, 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 obesity, BMI above and low. But it's not adjusted for cholesterol and no. HDL. Oh, no. okay. And uh, but you would expect that if you adjust for cholesterol, well, well, you you have the value zero on cholesterol. I mean, right. that, that but it's not, these are not, it's not multivariate. This is no, no, but you can see from total cholesterol in the model, if you go to oxidize LDL, there is a further increase. Yeah, that's but what, if that's this, if, that's what but that doesn't mean that if you adjust, if you adjust for total cholesterol, it would not go away completely. It comes in, in the last slide. On the last slide. Oh, okay. You, will, you, you have an that. increment. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, there is only a slight increase uh, which was not uh, associated with the benefit of the model if it comes to total cholesterol. Uh -huh. uh, same thing with uh, HDL cholesterol. Uh, the, uh, the ratio did uh, somewhat better also. It's, uh, the uh, the Archaicus information criteria is also below, uh, uh, below 10. Uh, then we have the, the non-HDL cholesterol which is in, in the, about the same range if you look at the uh, area under the curve. Uh, and finally, uh, the LDL, which is not uh, much different uh, from the from the former two. So I really was surprised that it came out uh, so strong so in this relatively small study. And the final slide uh, shows in a graphical uh, way um, um, the turtiles. Uh, blue is uh, unadjusted. Uh, then we have a yellow adjusted for only for H and survey. And black as if you can you enlarge it, it comes, it comes down. This um, uh